I'm going to give you the Hovind theory. Now, this is supposed to be good teaching technique. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you. You get all that? We're going to go through it very quickly. Eight simple steps of what I think caused the flood and explain all these strange phenomena on the planet. Then we'll go into them in a little bit more detail, and then we'll close this down. Noah and the animals got safely into the ark. A 300 degree below zero ice meteor came flying toward the earth and broke up in space. As it was breaking up, some of the fragments got caught and became the rings around the planets. They became, made the craters on the moon, the craters on some of the planets. And what was left over came down and splattered on top of the north and south pole. The super cold snow fell on the poles mostly, bearing the mammoths standing up. The dump of ice on the north and south pole cracked the crust of the earth, releasing the fountains of the deep. The spreading ice caused the ice age effects, the glacier effects that we see. It buried the mammoths, made the earth wobble around for a few thousand years. And it made the canopy collapse that used to protect the earth and opened up the fountains of the deep. During the first few months of the flood, the dead animals would settle out and dead plants and get buried. They would become coal if they're plants and oil if they're animals. And those are still found today in huge graveyards. Fossils found in graveyards, oil found in big pockets under the ground. During the last few months of the flood, the unstable plates of the earth would shift around. Some places lift up, other places sink down. That's going to form ocean basins and mountain ranges. And the runoff would cause incredible erosion like Grand Canyon in a couple of weeks. Over the next few hundred years, the ice caps would slowly melt back, retreating to their current size. The added water from the ice melt would raise the ocean level, creating what's called a continental shelf. It would also absorb carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, which allows more radiation to get in, which is going to shorten people's lifespans. And in the days of Peleg, it finally took effect. The earth still today shows the effects of this devastating flood. Now, a little more detail on each one. God told Noah, the Lord said to Noah, Come thou. Did you catch that? Listen very carefully. What did God tell Noah to do? He told him to come into the ark. He didn't say go into the ark. He said come into the ark. Where does God have to be in order to say that? In the ark. That'll preach, brother. There's a sermon right there. Just right there. Come into the ark, Noah. Come with me. We're going on a little cruise. Come on in. I'm here with you. And when the flood was over, God said to Noah, go out of the ark. God was with him the whole time. That would be quite the cruise. And the Lord shut the door. By the way, good eternal security verse. If the Lord's got you saved, you're saved, okay? You can't get out of God's hand. Then this 300 degree below zero ice meteor came flying through the solar system. Some of it broke apart. It made craters on Mercury and craters on the moon. Four of the planets today still have rings around them. And the rings around these planets are made of rock and ice. Very interesting. Now, Walt Brown thinks some of the craters on the moon were formed when the fountains of the deep broke open and rocks went flying up out of Earth's gravitational pull, drifted around for a while and clobbered into the moon. He may be right on that. I don't know. But it's interesting. He thinks the comets came from Earth and water on Mars came from Earth when the fountains of the deep broke open. You can read about it for yourself if you'd like. The super cold snow would land mostly around the poles. Because super cold ice is not only affected by the magnetic field, it's affected by, it's easily statically charged. How many have seen the Van de Graaff generator where they make your hair stand up? You know, we've got one of those at our science center at Dinosaur Adventureland. As this ice meteor came flying toward the earth, it broke apart. Pieces would, uh, would settle in around the poles mostly, causing the earth to wobble for a few hundred years. Or maybe even a few thousand years. The canopy of water overhead collapsed and it rained 40 days. The water underneath the bottom, under, under the crust, came shooting to the surface, and the water kept going up for 150 days, and everybody drowned. It probably took six or eight months to kill everybody during that flood. We all get the idea, well, it rained, and everybody died first day. No, it took a long time for people to die. People would be running and fighting for higher ground, as that got more and more rare, as the water keeps coming up and up and up. For 150 days, the water increased. By the way, they're still discovering chunks of ice flying around in space. Here's an article about a scientist who discovered chunks of ice as big as this auditorium are hitting the earth all the time. They dissolve in space, but it, rain, and it rains down as water. There's water, water everywhere in space. Science and technology article here. 
If you go to the North Pole, you'll be kind of chilly and one of only 400 people that have ever been there. But up around the North Pole, there's an ocean called the Arctic Ocean. I went up to see the Arctic Ocean a couple years ago and the guy said, hey, Brother Hovind, you know something interesting about this ocean? It has no tide. I said, man, I never thought of that. Taught her science for 15 years. Arctic Ocean has no tide. And who cares, right? Anyway, but there's an island up there called the uh, New Siberian Islands off the coast of Russia. There on those New Siberian Islands, they find frozen bobcats, frozen lynx, frozen camels. What happened? When they drill down through the ice, when they get to the South Pole and drill through the ice, they find coal under the ice at the South Pole. I would like to point out, Your Honor, there are no trees in Antarctica, zero. Admiral Byrd went down there and said they saw frozen palm trees or palm leaves near the South Pole. Scientists have discovered all sorts of frozen leaves, even dinosaur fossils, plant-eating dinosaurs near the South Pole. Thousands of well-preserved leaves found in Antarctica. Leaves on the side of a cliff 250 miles from the South Pole. And the leaves still retain their original cellular structure and organic content. They're not petrified. They're preserved. They find dinosaurs, plant-eating dinosaurs, in northern Alaska. There are no trees up there. I was there. there nothing. Not a blade of grass in most places. See, the Earth actually has two North Poles. We have a geographic North Pole where we spin around. We also have a magnetic North Pole in Canada where we actually, the compass actually points. Now here in Tennessee, it probably doesn't make a lick of difference. Your compass points north because both of them pretty much line up. But if you live in Alaska, your magnetic north is way different than the real north and pilots have to learn to adjust for that. And who cares, right? Okay. I think what happened, the mammoths were up there chomping on their tropical flowers. It was a beautiful day. And it began to snow, super cold snow. They had never seen snow before. One of the mammoths looked at his buddy and he said, Herman, this is peculiar weather we're having here. What is this white stuff falling out of the sky? He said, I don't know, but let's get out of here. They started running around trying to find a place to hide. And the snow got deeper and deeper and deeper. And they got stuck in the snow standing up. And they couldn't even fall down. How many of you have ever been in a snow drift so deep you couldn't even fall over? You ever been in one of those? I think that's what happened to the mammoths. People say, well, the mammoths have long hair. They're designed for cold weather. Oh, no, mammoths are not designed for cold weather. A lot of animals in the jungle have long hair where it's hot, okay? If the temperature is 70 degrees, long hair is just simply a decoration. It's neither, and there's a lot of things about the mammoth that shows they are not designed for cold weather. There's a whole section just in this book about mammoths are not designed for cold weather. You can read all about that. So the mammoths, some of them ended up frozen standing up in super cold ice, 300 below zero. As the ice goes pushing out toward the equator, it's gonna carve out glacial grooves. If you live in Ohio, if you go out to Kelly's Island, you can go out in the, in the uh, Lake Erie and see the glacial grooves scratches across the rock for miles. I think the ice age really happened, but it happened at the beginning of the flood. There are basically two theories among creationists about the ice age. One theory says, the Ice Age caused the Flood, which is what I believe. The other theory says the Flood caused the Ice Age. A minor difference. I don't think it's worth fighting over. But in either case, though, I think the, flood would, or the Ice Age would last several hundred years after the Flood. During the time after the Flood, as populations are growing, if somebody misbehaves, instead of building a jail and putting them in there where you've got to feed them for the rest of their life, just banish them. Say, so get out of here. You can't stay with our civilization. And boy, if times were hard and just new struggling civilization like Gilligan's Island, being banished is punishment enough. Now, you're going to follow the Ice Age animals around and kill them and, uh, you know, leave your toolbox behind because you don't want to carry 50 pounds of rocks with you. You wait till you get, find the mammoth herd and you make your tools on the spot and kill the mammoth. That's why they find, you know, uh, scrapers for skin and all kinds of flint arrowheads and stuff are found all over the world. These guys are, you know, they really do use these stone tools to kill these animals, but they don't carry them with them. But they're so plentiful. They're found all over the arrowheads and stuff like that. Anyway, then this super cold ice uh, at the pole would send off a cold wave. Like when you open the freezer and the cold air comes out and falls at your feet. This cold air hitting warm air would cause it to rain. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. The canopy collapsed. The Bible says all the fountains of the deep were broken up in one day. If you read the book of